Imagine being able to switch off the need to fart whenever you're in an important situation, like a presentation for work or a first date, or if you're on a cramped spacecraft with several other astronauts. I got the farts again. I got them again, Charlie. I think they have to be Yeah, not possible. In space, our bodily functions don't conveniently stop, and sometimes they change in insane ways. We're talking fart explosions, liquid burps, and runaway pee. Things can get messy, embarrassing, and downright dangerous. And so over the past 60 years of human space exploration, we've developed some bizarre workarounds and technologies. Just quickly, I'm Maddie Massey, and I make videos about the weird and wacky science you wish you learned at school. If that sounds good to you, make sure you subscribe for more, and anyways, back to astronaut farts. We're always accumulating gas in our intestines from swallowed air or the bacteria that help us to digest our food. And that gas has to come out somehow. So when astronauts pass wind on board spacecraft, the smell can hang around for a long time. That's because it's an enclosed space and there's really limited airflow compared to on Earth. But could this also mean danger? Back in the 60s when human space exploration was first starting, NASA was really worried that farts could potentially cause explosions. And that's because they can contain the flammable gases hydrogen and methane. NASA was so concerned that they experimented with different foods for astronauts to try and minimize gas production. Here, for example, are uh, some rehydratables. Uh, shrimp cocktail. So basically they fed men different diets and then measured the hydrogen and methane gas that they expelled using special collection tubes. During early space missions the astronauts stuck to a low residue diet and this basically means that they avoided high fiber foods like whole grains, nuts, seeds and raw fruits and vegetables. That's because when bacteria in our intestines digest fiber they produce gas so less fiber equals less gas. But over time it turned out that the hydrogen and methane that the astronauts were producing wasn't really a danger and the dreaded fart explosion never happened. So the low residue diet isn't a thing anymore for astronauts. Retired astronaut Tim Peake in fact said that his favorite breakfast on the ISS was baked beans, eggs and sausages. So farts in space probably aren't as deadly as we thought, but could they be a source of fun? Like if you're floating in microgravity and then you let one rip, will it propel you in the opposite direction? Like this balloon or a rocket launching? Let's do the maths. The average fart has a volume of around 25 to 100 mils, so somewhere between this little tiny cup and this slightly bigger jar. And we know this because of studies where scientists have hooked people up to a special collection tube for an extended period of time and measured the volume of each emission. This small amount of gas isn't going to be generating much force even if it shoots out pretty quickly and so a fart isn't going to cause an astronaut who might weigh say 70 kilos to be zooming off in the other direction. Also if you want some nice propulsion you probably want to channel the fart through a funnel like object and that's to make sure that the thrust all goes in the same direction but a fart kind of goes everywhere more party popper than rocket so sadly fart propulsion in space is a myth. Moving on to burping. Now this bodily function changes in space in a very disturbing way. If we imagine this plastic bag is a stomach, on Earth normally we can have liquids going into the stomach, getting pulled to the bottom due to gravity, and we also have solids going in there, getting pulled to the bottom too. And the gases stay at the top and they're easily expelled by burping. But when we're in space, because of microgravity, the solids, liquids, and gases all float around together. And retired astronaut Chris Hadfield calls it chunky bubbles. So then when you go to burp, the liquids, solids, and gases all come out together. So you're essentially throwing up, which is very unpleasant in an enclosed environment like a spacecraft or the helmet of your spacesuit. And this means that astronauts try and avoid burping as much as possible. But what if you're really feeling the urge? Retired astronaut James Newman developed this thing he called the push and burp technique. And essentially he would go on the wall of the spacecraft and he'd push off using his legs, which would generate a downward force on his stomach, causing the solids and liquids to go down and the air to go up. And then he could do a nice clean burp. And finally, there's another bodily function which has probably caused the most trouble of all for astronauts. Let's talk about peeing. The issue started on May 5th, 1961. This was a really important day for NASA because they were launching their first ever astronaut, Alan Shepard, into space. And the mission was meant to be short, 15 minutes in total, basically putting him into orbit above Earth and then bringing him down again safely. So they hadn't really thought too much about bodily functions. But then due to unplanned delays, he was waiting for four hours on the launch pad. And I thought my, my bladder was getting a little full and if I had some time, I'd like to 
relieve myself. The support crew told him to just do it in the suit. They temporarily switched off the medical sensors in his spacesuit so that they wouldn't short circuit and then he just pissed everywhere basically. And even though it was a bit festy, the mission was still successful in the end. Alan Shepard was just the beginning. So again, if we imagine that this plastic bag is now your bladder, normally on earth, the urine comes from your kidneys and travels to the bladder and gets pulled down to the bottom due to the force of gravity. And the bottom of the bladder stretches and your nerves in the bladder wall recognize this pressure and send signals to the brain saying it's time to pee. And this is a good thing, the fact that we need to pee when our bladder is only partially full. It means that we're not busting and there's plenty of time to get to the toilet if we need it. But in space, we don't have that downwards gravitational force. So urine doesn't collect at the bottom of the bladder. Instead, it kind of clings to the walls due to surface tension. And that means that as the urine builds up, we're not getting that same stretching of the walls or the same signals to our brain. And therefore the bladder can be extremely full before we even think it's time to pee. This means that astronauts will often set timed reminders to go to the toilet rather than wait and risk a potential accident. Another problem is collecting the urine without it going everywhere. We've designed toilets now for spacecraft that include a suction tube to collect the urine. But what about when astronauts don't have access to that, like Alan Shepard during the Freedom 7 launch or another astronaut on an extended spacewalk? For early space missions, we invented various devices like catheters or collection cups attached to bags. But there were issues with hygiene and making sure Sure everything went in the right direction in microgravity and when female astronauts entered the scene these devices were not optimal so in the 80s nasa invented the mag or the maximum absorbency garment i, I guess there's not any delicate way to say this uh, uh, we both wore adult diapers it contains a super absorbent polymer that takes up the urine and converts it into a gel which is much less messy and astronauts still wear the mag today but there's another thing that's in the works which is inspired by the series june do you remember the still suits which allow the Fremen to recycle their bodily fluids? Well, this is a device that collects urine in a silicone collection cup and takes the urine to a reverse osmosis filter, which converts it into drinking water that the astronauts can drink again. Yum. So yes, in space, our bodily functions can become unpredictable and the workarounds aren't necessarily glamorous, but I think it showcases how creative we can be designing ways to survive in this really hostile alien environment. And I don't know if you agree, but I could probably put up with a bit of grossness if it meant going to space.